My people, welcome back to another great episode of your favorite show, You and I Talk Show, with your host, Louise Wachu. Today, my people, we have a great, handsome actor who had to make himself ugly to do great. Stay tuned. All right, my people, we're here today with James Clayton. James Clayton, thank you so much for being on You and I. Thank you for having me. You look appreciate so it. handsome. Oh, thank you. What I appreciate this, that. you know? I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, have, I take no responsibility for it. I appreciate that compliment. Oh, wow. wow. And then, you know, I think maybe we're going to soon show people what I'm truly talking about. But the movie that we're going to talk about today, uh, among other things, which is Candyland, uh, that you did um, a few years ago, two years actually. Yeah, right? well, we filmed it uh, in 2014 and it's getting released uh, late this summer, 2016. Yeah, so a lot of emotions and it's been already two years. I mean, how does it feel to work on a project for so long and sacrifice so much and then finally? You know, it's really surreal. I the, the process of making the movie was two years, but I actually read the script probably about 12 years ago. I read it when I was 20, and uh, uh, my best friend, writer-director Rusty Nixon, was wanting to make this movie, and he was like, I'm gonna put you in this movie, we're gonna do this, and for a variety of reasons over the years, you know, I didn't have enough producing experience at the time, he was still growing as a director, it just never happened until 2014, I said to him, okay, you know, I raised this money, I know what I'm doing, let's, let's make this movie. And so we made this movie, and um, it's a culmination of, of really uh, the, the early part of, of my whole career as an actor and as a filmmaker. Uh -huh. And same with Rusty and my producing partner, Blaine Anderson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been friends for this long, and, and, yeah. then, and then you've been having this project in the back of your mind for this long? You know, it was one of those bucket list projects it would come and go away and I felt really passionately about it. And the reason why I really pulled up my socks and said, okay, we're gonna be doing this is because, you know, the character is supposed to be in his early 20s. I was turning 30 and I thought to myself, okay, am I gonna have any regrets in life? And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna regret not making Candyland. Yeah. And it's based off the book by Elizabeth Engstrom. And she's a wonderful lady. It's a, it's a wonderful novel. It's a scary novel, though. It's a thriller. But is it based that of an, an actual story, or this is it's imagination? No, it's, it's, it's purely fiction, but it, it's, uh, the story itself is actually an anagram for alcoholism. Mm -hmm. and, and really probably any addiction mm -hmm. and the toll that it takes on the mind, body, and, and specifically the soul. There's a lot of, of themes in the movie that address spirituality. Spirituality. <laughs> yes. Can't say that word all the time. It's a and, new word. And all that. It's a new, wor uh, <laughs> new word and, and yeah. religion and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So when you're good looking and then yeah. you have to like, make yourself look ugly for a role, how hard is that? And, are you, when, and then when people see it, do you enjoy not being recognized, or well, are I have you a lot of makeup on, you're... So I just take the makeup okay. off, and that's that's the first that's the first step. Uh -huh. um, I don't really think about it like that, to be honest with you. I mean, in the novel and in the script, it said the character becomes emaciated, and so my first thought was, okay, well, I'm gonna. Make myself emaciated because I'm very curious. What is uh, what does that word? So emaciated means just like underfed, undernourished, skeletal in features, and um, and it's literally written there. It says there is an undescript time that has passed in in his apartment. He's now emaciated. The apartment is now filled with garbage, and it's a very visceral language inside the script. And I really wanted to to honor that story and honor that character. And you know, a lot of people may say, oh, it sounds very method. And I, 
I, I guess you could say that. I'm not a method actor. Like, I don't like to live the character, but I definitely want to honor the character. Mm -hmm. So I won't be starving myself for every role or doing something crazy for, I don't think, anyways, I haven't made the decision yet. So. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then, uh, so the whole process now of mm -hmm. the transformation, how long before the shooting, oh, do you take in mind that maybe in the beginning he's not so skinny, Absolutely. and then the order of the shooting, like how does it go? That's a great question. So when we started shooting, we started in chronological order. So I was my full weight. I was actually five pounds less than I am now. So it was about 185. We shot for about a week, and then I slowly started eating less because I just wanted to train my body. And then when we wrapped our first block of shooting, we took a two month gap in between. And I, it, 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 I don't recommend this, but I just basically drank a lemonade. Wow. And took multivitamins for about two months. And just lemonade and multivitamins. Yeah, and I'm not exaggerating that. It was probably. From morning to evening, 24 seven. Yeah, yeah, and what I did was, I, I, it was liquid and I, I weaned myself down over the weeks to the point where I was down to maybe uh, about maybe 178, 200 calories a day liquid, which sounds crazy, and it, it was. But what happens is, is in terms of character work, that just automatically happens. There's this, especially with something like that, because my body was so malnourished and my brain was so messed up that um, it's kind of going down a rabbit hole. So it's like really painful and it's really hard. And then once all of a sudden you're like six weeks in, you go, if I go back and like gorge and cheat, I'm gonna be sick. So I might as well just keep going. Okay. It's let's, wild. Let's take a short break and then we'll sure. come back and show people what you're talking about. You and I talk show with Louis Zuachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. Okay, my people, we're back with the handsome James Clayton. So just so people don't think that we're just talking, I think we're going mm -hmm. to show them both clips, the yep. clip where you're with your co-actor and then we're going to talk about him and also the clip where you're getting ugly. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. You can't even live your own life, old man. You don't know what's going on anymore. The second I find happiness, here you are, desperate to take it away. Peter, come on, this is your father. Come on, Peter. Well, not this time! Hmm. I am a legal adult now, and there ain't a goddamn thing that you can do to get into this place. I like that. I like that attitude. I hate you! Gosh. I hate you! And I don't want anything ever to do with you ever again. I'm dismissed. Ah. Hey! All right, so that is the first clip with your co-star. Gary Busey. Gary Busey. He is yeah. such a crazy actor. I love him. <laughs> I've always loved him. Yeah. First of all, how is it, you know, later on we're going to show the second one. Absolutely. Um, how is it working with such a great actor and does that make you put the pressure on you? And then he's playing your dad, so, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, first off, an incredible honor um, and really intense because Gary is an Academy Award nominated actor. And so, just in real life, never mind when you're in a scene with him, it's like talking to a laser. He's listening to you, and he wants to know what your intention is. Uh, at the same time, he's, you know, as eccentric as his public personality may be, he is a very kind man. And he's actually um, uh, very inspirational. Like, he would always, we spent a very short time together, but he would always come by and go, so what are you working on for this scene? And I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm thinking about it like this. To be like, oh, you do this. You go, oh, <laughs> that's amazing. And so he made me really feel like he was very fatherly. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very easy, um, easy relationship mm -hmm. to bond with him. And then in terms of acting, absolutely, you got to raise your game um, because he he doesn't like to do a lot of takes. And the reason being is because he's on. 
He doesn't need to do a lot of takes. He'll come in and boom, boom, boom. So that forced me, having way less experience than him, to go, okay, game face on. We're going to do this. And then we go action, boom, boom. Nice. And, and then it. since you're also on the production side of the movie, mm -hmm. are you part of the people who decided to cast him, to have him as a co-star? Or do you have other people in mind? Like, why him? Oh, well, you know what? Gary was actually Rusty's um, kind of brainchild. He always envisioned Gary as the part. And uh, when it came time to casting, I said, well, why don't we just ask Gary Busey? That's so, so wonderful. Yeah, so we, so we, we sent him uh, the script and a little letter. And uh, he responded back actually really quickly, in about a week's time, I believe. And he said, I'm fascinated by the story. I'd love to chat with you. So we jumped on Skype with him. And I, really quickly, I'll explain the Skype meeting of Gary because there was something wrong with the connection. So I'm not exaggerating this. He had one eye on this side of the screen. There was <laughs> a mouth here. So he looked like a Picasso painting. Uh, and, and so that was the first time we met Gary. We talked with him for about an hour and a half, and at wow. the end of it, he said, yeah, okay. Let's so you do this. would think that it's so hard to get to him because he's such a, a big star, right? And he's done so yeah. many things, or you have to go through his people. Well, we definitely went through his people, but I, I will say, you know, it's a testament to the script that Rusty wrote and a testament to the, to the story in the novel that Elizabeth Engstrom wrote as well. It was a good story, and I think that's why we were so persistent in wanting to make it for over a decade. Mm -hmm. It was just really good material, and he responded to it. And now you have won the prestigious Indie Fest Film Award of yeah. Excellence. I did win that, yeah. How does that feel? And, how, you know, did you go, and how was it? Well, I, I actually, I, I, w I was busy with production stuff, so I, I didn't have a chance to go, but... Ah, oh, you're one of those people who uh, don't even show up for I there. know, oh. you know, I, you know, it's... I'm really grateful for the recognition, and it feels, it feels really good. And, and I know it's a cliche to say that I don't do it for the recognition, but it, it's true, you know, I just, I really enjoy working with my friends and my family, because that's really... I'm really fortunate to be able to do that, and really working on material that speaks to me. Um, that I don't really, I don't really think about that stuff. But what's really nice about it is that people are responding to the work, mm -hmm. and that's really, that's really cool. So how do they notify you, and do they hold like a, a ceremony, a red carpet, and all those? Yeah, things? I believe there's a little gala down in California, and uh, it's funny they, they, they sent me an email. It was kind of weird. I, I woke up in the morning and. I checked my email and I just looked over at my fiance and I was like, hey Bernadette, uh, I won this award. She's like, oh my God, it's amazing. And she's like, how do you feel? And I'm like, I feel amazing. But I was like, I got so much to do today on, <laughs> for film wise that I, you just, you, know, you can't get caught up in it. Yeah, but then you show up on set and, and how do you feel, you know, because now you won an award for excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, is it an added pressure when you show up on, on, on stage? Now you have to beat yourself. You know, you have to like, well, it's true. excel you're, yourself. Yeah, you're only ever in competition with yourself. But no, I would say it's it's a confidence builder. Okay. The way I look at it, because it just means someone's going. You did some good work. Just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a short <laughs> break, my people. Good work, and we'll be back. You and I talk show with Louis Zuachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. Okay, so for now, I think we're going to start off by checking out your excellent work, The Transformation, the other clip where you completely mm. transform from this handsome <laughs> to that. <laughs> Let's see how it is. Just looking at Clayton makes me hungry. <laughs> So what is uh, the first person I think who would be affected would be your fiance. Did she have to live with that? 
No, she didn't actually. We, uh, and, and thank God she knew me at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, she saw me the day after we wrapped. So oh. I was that weight. I was 131 pounds. So I went from 185 to 131. Yeah, I was 131. And I'm 191 now. And um, we were actually just friends at the time. We hadn't started dating. And I wrapped the film and I went and, uh, to meet someone and I ran into her. And she looked at me and she was like, she didn't recognize me. Yeah. And then it, afterwards, she told me after I recuperated, she went to her friends and said, James ruined himself. He's never coming back. <laughs> it's over. And she I don't be blame her. on something. Well, there's, I told her it was for filming, but there's always going to be speculation, uh, right? Like a lot of people were worried. Yeah. And, and it, it does look worrying. It, 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 it definitely is. And, you know, I was spending a lot of time with my aunt and my mom at the time which are the two worst people to spend time with when you're, when you're destroying yourself. Yes. And it is kind of a selfish thing. It is, and it can definitely come off that way. Um, they were really understanding all things considered. Because I'm thinking, like, your mom is telling you, eat, 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 and she doesn't yeah. want to see her, her baby going 100%. like that. And things could go wrong. You know, a lot of people ask me, did you go see a doctor? Yeah. I didn't go see a doctor, because I knew a doctor was going to say, don't do it. Yeah. And I read a lot of interviews with other actors who've done this, like with Matt Damon and Michael Fassbender. Christian Bale did the ultimate weight loss. He went down to like 120 pounds, and he's my stature. Long. That's 10 pounds lighter, and I don't know how he did it. The man is superhuman. Yeah. Uh, but they all said the same thing. They said, yeah, doctor said don't do it. Take some vitamins. Wow. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I guess, I guess what, am I going to get different advice? Is there a magic doctor out there? So Yeah. yeah. So what would you say, uh, what kind of advice would you give to young actors? And then you've worked with uh, grown-up, you know, people yeah. who have had experience and you've had experience yourself. So a young actor coming into the game, what do you tell them? Well, right off the bat, you don't have to starve yourself or do anything crazy. Mm -hmm. It should always be health and safety first. Don't, don't do what I did, and I sincerely mean that. Yeah. Like, I, I did it, uh -huh. but I can definitely say don't. But aside from that, just start acting. Like, if you're just brand new, go to an audition class, go to an acting class, and just start doing it and make as many mistakes as possible. And make sure you're consistently bringing yourself to the work. Just be yourself and bring your own natural uniqueness. I like how you say make as many mistakes as possible. Oh, yeah. Because this is the thing that people are afraid of doing. You know, even this job, you're afraid of making mistakes and, and looking Absolutely. like a fool on camera. <laughs> isn't that isn't that the most fun stuff to watch though? It's you know, the most memorable characters are the ones that are kind of falling apart. Uh -huh. You know, and there's an, an, an immense vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're consistently approaching the work and not worrying about being vulnerable, that is what we all want to see. Mm -hmm. right? Because we're vulnerable in real life. And so when you start to act, especially if you're new, you tense up. And so all that natural goodness kind of gets locked. But it's about relaxing and allowing that stuff to happen. And it's a process. Wow. So you're supposed to go on set Relax. Yeah, that is that is the ideal situation. Uh -huh. Now, if you were completely relaxed, you'd be dead. Yeah. So unfortunately, <laughs> you can't be a hundred percent relaxed. Uh -huh. um, but but that's the goal: to be completely relaxed and open, uh -huh. and to just be in the moment. What about looks, though? You know, we we're under the impression that you have to be good looking or you have to look a certain way to get the part. How much does looks play into it? I don't know. Because you've never been ugly? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. I mean, I've had trouble yeah. booking roles. And, and you know, you said I'm handsome so many times during this interview. Okay. I really want to thank you. Okay. I've never had someone say that so many times. But <laughs> very, very generous it's with that. It's not a compliment. It's for no. real. No, well, thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I've had just as much trouble booking roles uh -huh. as, as anyone else mm -hmm. who m someone else may consider not good looking or have an interesting look or have a very distinct way of, say, dressing or piercings, I think you just have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And you cannot worry about trying to fit into a mold. I remember hearing a story about this one actor who he was consistently changing his look depending on who the flavor of the month was. Oh. 
So this is way back in the day, and I, I can't even remember this actor's name, but he had a Tom Selleck phase, he had a Tom Cruise phase, but he never really found any traction in his career. And the reason being is because he was never himself. Uh -huh. Because we do need for James Clayton to exist and be James Clayton and not mm -hmm. be anybody else. Well, if I tried to pretend to be like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, I'd, I'd pale in comparison. And it would be a, a tall order aside from that, considering how great of an actor he is. So mm -hmm. it's you just, you got to do your own thing. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's take a short break and come back. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back with James Clayton, so talented. Now, on top of being an actor, you also have a production company and you're managing director at Motorcycle Boy Productions. What's that about? So, uh, Motorcycle Boy Productions is a company that I founded with uh, my two best friends, uh, Rusty Nixon, who's our in-house writer, director, and producer, and Blaine Anderson, who's our in-house writer, He's a director as well, producer, actor, and uh, we've known each other for over a decade. Uh, we uh, founded the company about three years ago, and we've made a movie every year since. Wow. And we really like each other. That is so impressive. And we impressive. work well together. Yeah, it's been, it's been really lucky. What about competition and uh, jealousy and stuff like that? Oh, between us three? Yes. Every day. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, uh, jokes aside, uh -huh. you know, Rusty's got this saying. He says, you know, it's interesting. All three of us want to be alpha dog because we all have very strong personalities. Mm -hmm. And it is always, no matter whether your strong personalities are weak, it's always about making sure everyone tags off. Mm-hmm. But we've known each other for so long that uh, it's it's not as hard as it as it may seem. Okay, yeah. and the Nixon guy is he related to Nixon? I or? have no idea, <laughs> okay. but it's a fantastic name, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he, he just had a you son. You remember it? And his his son's name, his newborn son's name is Lex, so he has a supervillain for his son, Lex <laughs> Nixon. He purposely did it because he wants to take over the world. Actually, at the beginning of the last clip, that was Rusty oh. talking at the beginning, uh -huh. writer-director Rusty uh -huh. Nixon. Wow, yeah. that, is, that is so crazy because usually um, I've heard uh, a man say that when he's working with men, because men are so competitive, everyone mm. is trying to take the other out and be the man. So you guys working together yeah. as three men and nobody's taking anybody out to be the man? Well. I'm not going to say it's a perfect world. We all have our days, but we all know why we're doing it at the end of the day. Which is? Uh, because we just love telling stories. And um, we're all family men, really. I mean, Blaine has two kids and a wife. Rusty has one kid and a wife. I'm getting married. I'm probably going to have a kid next year. So we're really, we're really grounded. And we always talk in goals, like we're very organized. We'll sit down, we'll go, okay, where do we want to be five years from now? Which, you know, you can apply to anything in life and also your acting career, going back to acting advice. You know, making a plan but also having a vision of where you want to go is really important. And so we already have the next five years planned. Scripts are written and ready to go. And our plan is to shoot a movie every year and create a body of work in this world. That is so amazing. So what kind of movies and what is the vision? What do you want the future to remember you as and what, what can we expect from the motorcycle boys? And then, so are you guys uh, doing motorcycles? I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking the name is coming from the motorcycle. You, you know what, in all honesty, uh -huh. none of us ride motorcycles. No! no and, I, and I'll tell you, well, I can't speak for Rusty and Blaine. I can speak for myself, though I'm actually forbidden to ride motorcycles. What? Well, my father got into a, a really bad motorcycle accident when I was young, and it almost took his life. Not to sound sad, but so my mom always goes, you're not allowed on a motorcycle, so I never in, you know, jumped on one. 
But the company is actually named after Mickey Rourke's character in Rumblefish. He was the motorcycle boy. It was oh. based off an S.E. Hinton novel. Okay. Um, and so we're big fans of Mickey. We're big fans of Francis Ford Coppola. So it's an homage oh. name to him. Oh, I see, yeah. I see, I see. And then since, you know, uh, boy, I'm thinking it's because it's kind of a boy club. No, no, we love, no, everyone is welcome. Uh, it's only just based off the name of that character. And if there was going to be any reference to boy as in child, it could be girl or boy. I think there are films we want an inherent sense of fun. There's going to, you know, Candyland's quite dark. It's very adult. Our next film that we're going to camera this month on, Residue, is a horror film noir. But there's going to be there, there's a lot of fun. There's comedy. There's scares, and um, there's joy. Mm -hmm. And so that childlike joy we want to bring to every film because we, we find nice. that entertaining. Yeah. yeah. So what about? Uh, I think we can end up on this uh, financing because everybody mm. has a story. Yeah. So many people want to make movies. What about financing? How? What's the best way to get the money? You know what? It's going to be person specific. Um, if you have a great script, a great place to start is to talk to sales agents. And there are intermediate companies that will look at projects and help discuss financing, grants. Uh, another great thing, which I've done, is um, if you know a dentist or a doctor, you should most certainly start chatting with them. That's what the Cohen brothers did. Oh. Just have to keep sharing your vision with people. And uh, something weird happens. All of a sudden, things start showing up. Mm -hmm. Because really, you know, in the last three years, we've made three films, and they're all pretty much going to end up coming out at the same time. But it's been very dreamlike an mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. It's we just said we're going to do it. We keep working, and it happens. Nice. Yeah. Well, James Clayton, thank you so much for yeah. being here. Is there thank a last so thing that you would like to tell our audiences before we let you go? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, please uh, catch Candyland later on uh, this year in the summertime. Stars uh, myself, the wonderful uh, Chayla Horsdale, and the fantastic Gary Busey. Yes. Yeah. All right, my people, that's it. It was great. James Clayton, thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you again next week, my people. <laughs>